to the workshop uh, listening to the voices of children, helping them to be angry safely. Um, we are with the three of us. Um, we're going to present to you two children's programs. Um, and as we said on the stage, uh, we're going to start uh, with our colleague from Australia. Um, maybe I can start with introducing us. We're from Blijftop. As I said, we were uh, on the plenary session. Yeah. This is Anneke, Anneke Oemans. My name is Christine Everts. And we're going to start with Nel Kuilinger. Would you please take the stage you for you your program? <laughs> well, thank you very much for the warm welcome. Um, for me, it's a very big, um, exciting journey to be here and a privilege. And I'm very grateful for the warm welcome that we've received and enjoying the conference. <coughs> Um, I was just sharing that if I was in Australia, I would do an official welcome to country and acknowledge the tradition. Sorry, Can you if, speak a little bit louder? Yeah. If I was in Australia, I would acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Aboriginal people of Australia, but I'm now in the Netherlands. And as you probably picked up from my name, I was actually um, I was born in Amsterdam and immigrated to Australia when I was a little girl. So it's a double um, privilege to be here. So my project is called Safe From The Start, and I'll go back to the original slide. Um, and I just want to give you a little bit of background on why we did the project. Um, a group of women um, in the 1980s, um, we set up a women's shelter together as a group. Um, we had a beautiful house, we had um, six families, we had a beautiful playroom, beautiful toys, um, a children's worker. Um, but in that period, children were not considered at all in terms of how domestic violence had impacted on them. They lived in the shelter, it was not explained what a shelter was. And very often I remember that we used to say to the mothers, your children are so well behaved, You've got, you know, they're, they're very well behaved, they're good children, um, you don't need to worry about them, they're really good. But we didn't realise that um, we didn't realise that the children were actually traumatised. They were walking on eggshells, they were scared. They were too scared to be themselves, so that's why they appeared to be very well behaved. Um, and it wasn't until um, maybe eight or nine years ago when I started reading all the research uh, <coughs> from Dr. Bruce Perry in um, the US about the impact on brain development and how the external environment impacts on the way that a child's brain develops. But I, it was like a little red bulb mo moment where I, I felt guilty that we had actually let our children down. And even the government in those days didn't want to know how many children we had. We, they funded us, but we had no, um, there was no data collection on children. Um, so that was really how the idea to, to focus much more on children. So this project is about children, it's for children, and it's about children. And I guess I have my antennas up whenever I go to a, um, a domestic violence conference, how little emphasis is actually put on the impact of violence on children. So that's what the project's about. And as a result of that, I was very fortunate that we had a partnership already with the um, University of Tasmania, and we had done quite a, a number of joint projects. And so we were able to um, collaborate with the university and undertake um, first some research into what the impact of violence on children is and then secondly um, how women's shelters um, work with children um, and then later we were able to get funding to, um, to do a piece of action research for 12 months to put a training program together. Um, shelter workers said we, we don't feel qualified, we don't feel that this is our space, um, we're nervous about doing it. So we had a 12-month action research project, and so you can see all these um, um, reports that we've done with the university. They're all available on our website. You can download them all. Um, and what the research um, showed was that um, there are a lot of resources around that are really not suitable for children that are vulnerable and that have, that have experienced trauma. So we put together a one-day training program and a, a resource kit that you can see here. And I think one of the reasons the project has been so successful is that the fact that we did do it in partnership with the university and all the women's shelters and um, psychologists and people that have expertise in the area. Um, it's just not that we've put things together. There's a reason why every resource in the kit has been chosen. 
So that's just a little bit of background. Um, in, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but a lot of people have commented that the Minister gave a very good impression of how domestic violence is being responded to in Australia. And that is true, but we also have a crisis on our hands. And the crisis is that in the last 12 months, we've had two women a week killed in Australia. Um, up until last year, it was one a week. And in the last 11 months, we've had two a week. I should not keep touching that. Um, and over half a million um, women reported that their children had seen or heard the violence. So that's, um, that, that is incredible <coughs> on a lot of children. Um, the statistics are the same pretty much all over the world, and I won't go into those, but basically one in three women in Australia is affected by domestic violence. Um, sexual violence, one in five, and then we have um, one in four with, um, I think that's emotional abuse. <coughs> Um, so it's pretty much, I think, the world over, but the Minister gave a pretty good impression of all the wonderful things happening in Australia, but that's certainly not the way that the women's, um, the women's services see it. Um, and I guess the Rosie Batty um, um, experience has actually put it on the national map and the politicians are now taking notice. And it's made a huge difference that Rosie Batty has become the spokesperson I mean, she's articulate, she's intelligent, and everyone is listening to her, and um, especially um, children. She is saying that we need to do a lot more in the space of working with children. Now, in Australia, Indigenous women are 35 <coughs> times more likely to be hosp hospitalised um, due to family violence and 10 times more likely to die. So that's a very serious situation that, that we're um, concerned about. Um, the data shows us that 61% of um, situations of violence have children in their care and 48% of women said that they had, the children had actually seen or heard the violence. And like everyone's been saying, we think these are very, very conservative um, figures and that it's actually a lot more. Um, we all know what the, the harm is to children. Um, that it affects their physical, emotional, developmental, um, behavioural and impacts on relationships. But one of the things that we don't often talk about, and this certainly came out when I worked in the women's um, shelter, that children, it affects them socially. They don't get invited to birthday parties. They don't have a birthday party. They often don't get birthday presents because there's so much trauma going on around them. Um, they often go to school with, with dirty uniforms because mum hasn't been able to wash their uniforms. They go to school without lunch. So there's lots of everyday, really practical things that happen that, um, that impacts on, on children. Um, now, Nancy Boyd Webb is a author, I don't know whether people are familiar with it, and I just want to mention her book. It's called Play Therapy and Children in Crisis. It's a fabulous book that I really would recommend that you, um, it's all on our website, so you can see it there. Um, but that's a book that gives lots of examples of children in crisis um, and ways to work therapeutically with them. Um, and she says, and I think this is really important to think about, um, the child is psychologically robbed of both parents. One is the terrifying aggressor that they're terrified of, and the other is the terrified victim. So they basically don't have the normal um, mum and dad um, interactions. So what children say is, first of all, they want to be believed. Whatever they tell you, they want to know that they can be believed. They want to be heard. They want to be treated with respect and not be dismissed and they want the violence to stop. But they want both their mum and their dad. That comes out very clear. The children want both their mum and their dad, but they want the violence to stop. Um, when we were doing the project, um, a lot of the women shelter workers said, we're really worried that we might do some harm, that, we, that the child might get upset, that we might trigger something that um, that they don't want to talk about. Um, and I actually found this research quote, which gave me a lot of um, encouragement, that this is really what it's about. A child who lives with violence is forever changed, but they're not forever damaged. And there is a lot that we can do to improve their future prospects. And um, those of you who are familiar with um, Dr. Bruce Perry, he says that 
one encounter with a child where the child can express what they're feeling, they might remember that forever. And it might change them forever. It might make them resilient in a way that if they hadn't have been able to talk to someone. Um, and I guess a good example is we had a, a DVD made with some scenarios with psychologists and, and um, various counsellors testing and trialling the, the resources. And I asked my grandson whether he would be willing to be filmed. And um, at first he said no, and then he said, oh yes, when I explained what it was for. And so there's a book called A Terrible Thing Happened, and I wanted to read this book to him. Now, it doesn't say what the terrible thing is. It's not about domestic violence. And their dog had died, so I thought, oh, well, he can talk about, you know, that his dog died. So I read him the book, cover to cover, which is probably not the way to do it. And then I said, Ollie, has a terrible thing ever happened to you? And straight away, he said, yes, um, our back fence blew down, and it was really, really scary. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, oh, the fence blew down, and the trampoline went up in the air, and he said all the toys were broken, and it was really, really scary. I was so scared. And I said, oh. Anyway, then I said, you know, what, what else makes you scared? And he said, oh, what else um, terrible has happened? And he said, um, our dog died, and that was very sad. And, and then I said to his mother later, who of course is my daughter and who's a, you know, a perfect mother, I think, but I'm a little bit biased. I said, has Ollie ever talked to you about the back fence blowing down? She said, what? And she is a teacher and she's a special ed teacher where she teaches children with special needs. So her antennas are up pretty well. She said, he has never, ever, ever said anything about being scared when the back fence blew down. So I think that is a really good example that every child has situations in their life where something has happened that's made them scared, that's caused anxiety, that they have probably not told anyone about. So this, this, um, this quote, I think, gives us all permission, whether we're grandparents, whether we're aunts, whether we're uncles, whether we're neighbours, whether we're teachers, doesn't matter where we are or what our role is, all of us have an opportunity to have our antennas up and and give a child an opportunity to express what they're feeling. Um, so I'm now going to show you a little video clip and I would like three volunteers to put their hand up. There's just a first little section that I'm going to ask three people to put a blindfold on um, and then I'll ask you to take the blindfold off and afterwards if you could just share how it felt to actually hear something but not actually see it. So I'd like three volunteers who would wear the blindfold. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Not me. Uh, anyone else? No, no. Okay, give it to you. That's very good. Ooh, and in the back. Very good. Help yourself. Thank you. That was if you copied any by Jim Carter, thank you. 
Tell me, Kath. Well, it started five years ago. Five years? Serious? Yeah, it's been going on that long. At the start, I just kind of thought it was a one-off thing, you know? But it just kept going. And it got worse. I felt real low. Look, I was the failure. And with the kids and all, it was a real shame job. I wanted to be a proper mum to them kids. I didn't want the family to break up. You could have come to me, see? Sandra, he threatened me. Cut this bastard. Son, my dad brought you. who wore the blindfolds, would you like to share how it felt to hear the shouting that's going on in the house but not actually seeing it? Would you like to start and just share how it felt? Uh, I felt pretty scared. I, uh, I, I felt I was, uh, yeah, I don't know how to call it in English, but I, Calvin, yeah. I called in and uh, yeah, I want to hide somewhere. Who else had a blindfold? How did you feel? That I couldn't help. That I didn't know what to do. I, I, I felt helpless. Yeah. And number three? I don't want to know how it feels. Would you I like to stand up a little louder? I said I know very well how it feels because I grew up in the house where that happened often. And I'm 59 now, and I work with children for the past 24 years in a shelter in Canada. 
and I can say that those feelings are with you and it's something you carry with you your whole life. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing because I know that it's hard, but it's incredibly important that we all hear that, that little children, um, yes they are resilient. I remember um, during various stages I felt guilty as a mother, I've got four children. Some of the things that I had done I thought, oh I should never have done that. And then I found some research which said that if you're a good parent 30% of the time, your kids will be okay. Children are resilient and, and they heal. and. But it just goes to show that some of those things are deep. And the other thing that people tell us is that um, the fear of the unknown, like if you can't see what's happening, you imagine that it's worse than what it is. So even though it's really bad, is mum being killed? Is she being hit? Is there blood? What am I going to see when I walk in the room? So the fear of the unknown is very, is very strong as well. So thank you for sharing that. I hope that you're encouraged by um, the rest of the presentation. Okay, so what, um, as I've mentioned, we put a kit together, which is made up of 35 resources. They are all specialist uh, books and resources that are chosen for a purpose. I'm not gonna say too much about that now. Um, there are just two books that I'd like to talk about which are um, focused around um, violence. And the two books are um, On a Dark, Dark Night, um, which is an American book. Um, it's written by a police sergeant, and it basically is the story of um, Mother Bear, Father Bear, and a cub. And you can see that Mother Bear is being um, hit. Um, um, I'll just go back to that picture. Um, Father Bear is sent away and for help, and that's explained to the cub. But what is the, what's lovely about this story that all the animals in the forest gather around and support the family, support the mum, support the cub. Things are talked about in the community, it's all explained. Father Bear comes back and um, after a little while things haven't changed so he has to leave permanently and that's all explained to the cub. <coughs> but what's really nice at the end of the story as well is that Father, um, Father Bear explains to the little cub no matter where I'm living, if I'm living here or somewhere else, I will always love you. So that's basically the, um, the, the story. Um, the other one which is really fantastic, and I, I think we've sold about 900 of these and they've gone sort of, you know, all over the world. This is a Canadian book and I'm very surprised some of the Canadian shelter workers I've spoken to have never heard of this book and yet it comes from their country. So this is called The Magic Beads, and um, as you can see in the pictures, Lily is a little girl living in a shelter, and it's the only book we've found that actually talks about living in a shelter. Um, she has no uniform, and the kids are teasing her a bit because it's a new school. On Monday, the teacher says, you have to do show and tell on, on Friday, and straight away she gets butterflies in her tummy because she knows that she hasn't really got any toys to at the shelter that she can bring. Tuesday she's got rabbits in her tummy, Wednesday she's got donkeys, and by Thursday she's got buffaloes. And she says to her mum, please can we go to the shop and buy something? And her mother says, well, we're living in a shelter, I have no money, we need to save all our money, no, I haven't got anything. And then by Friday she decides that she's got some beads and she's going to pretend that they're magic. And she stands up in front of the class very happy and says, if they touch the blue one, this might happen. If you touch the red one, this could happen. And all the children are very engaged and interested in her and, and are really very nice to her. So it has a really nice ending. So um, I think every shelter um, should have that book and especially Canadian people that, um, that they become aware that this resource is there. Um, in Australia, we did not have very many books that were culturally appropriate. And when we did our training, um, so over the last three or four years, we've gone all around Australia, and particularly in remote communities as well, where there are high Aboriginal people. And they all said, um, please don't pick on our mums and dads, uh, on our dads only as being violent. Our mums are um, violent too, even though it might be more sort of yelling and screaming and psychological abuse. So these two books we commissioned and we've had these published. So when daddy hits the table, when mummy shouts, both of them start off, I love my mum, I love my dad, we love to go fishing, we love to go to the beach, but sometimes daddy hits his fist on the table um, and 
it's just a way of children who are actually living with violence that you can be very open about what's happening and um, talk to them about it. Um, the other research project that we did was um, looking particularly at, um, in Australia we say CALD, which stands for Culturally and Linguistically Diverse, and I only say it once because every few years they change the, the terminology, but we did a special project um, working with um, <coughs> um, communities from other cultures to see whether the books and the things that we had was actually appropriate. And the feedback was very much um, <coughs> that a lot of those children don't have um, concentration skills where maybe they sit down and read a story. So we've now got you know some puppets, um, some mood dudes. I don't know whether people have seen these, but they've, they've got different expressions, angry, scared, happy, um, which is squashy. Um, we've also um, found a very large ball, which I haven't blown up because it's too much energy, but this is a big um, language ball with um, angry, happy, cry, confused, just different words, so that maybe you can use the puppets, maybe you make up your own story. Um, and the other two books are called um, How Are You Peeling? I don't know whether people have seen this, this is also an American book. It's absolutely fabulous, very, very um, amusing. You can make a happy story out of it. Um, the child can make up their own story or you can use puppets and you know different other tools. Um, did I end this one? Sorry. Um, so there's the language ball. The, the hand puppet is also very good. We, in the little DVD clip we have made, one of the children um, didn't engage with the story, story at all. <coughs> and when she saw the hand puppet, she put the puppet on and then all of a sudden she started talking about feelings and emotions and that really opened up. These are just some resources that, this really is a toolbox. We've got lots of resources. Everything is on our website and I'll give you a flyer with the website address. Um, and all of these things you can copy and adapt and adjust to your own country or um, there's a brochure which I've got some copies of as well, which I'm going to go through very quick. Um, we've got a website, so everything that we have done, everything that we also find, we find lots and lots of um, good resources. In the UK, they've got <coughs> a, um, a children's shelter sort of handbook, which is on the internet that you can just um, print out and colour and have children do different activities. Um, Rosie Batty, who of course is our um, Australian of the Year, her book comes out this month. Um, so, and I think the second one that you can see here, there's a, there's a website link for the Women's Shelter uh, resource book which you can download. So that's really it for me. How am I going for time? Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do we want to do questions all together at the end? No, or? you can do it right now. Maybe <coughs> that's easier. Would you like to? I would have a question for the situation in Australia about visitation rights because in um, in Washington conference we learned about the Safety First campaign and the move of the Family Act with a broad de definition of uh, about uh, what is violence also against children and I would be very interesting to hear whether the situation gets better now with this new Family Act for the children uh, with Safety First and. The, yes. the problem of visitation right or <coughs> in most states in Australia, as you saw on the map, we have seven states and I don't think it's happened in every state, but most states now we have new legislation which says if a child witnesses domestic violence, that is considered child abuse, <coughs> and child protection will get involved. It's good and it's bad. The mothers now no longer want to call the police about their own, if they're being hurt, because the first fear they have is that their child will be removed um, from the home. So that is stopping women from um, reporting domestic violence, which is not good. So a lot of community education has to happen so that women can be assured that if, um, if they do ring the police that their children are going to be safe. But yeah, there's, um, it, it's, it, it's also made child protection department workers work much more closely with the women's refuges and the domestic violence workers. I mean, that has, in the past, that was more sort of separated. We, I have a lot of child protection workers come to this training, and so they absolutely love it, and I say, why? And it's because this is more a positive approach as opposed to they work in a very negative environment where it's all focused on damage, damage, damage. Um, 
But the other thing that I, that I um, usually just sort of mention is the big question, why don't women leave, is very much um, in the 12 years I worked in the shelter, women would say hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, I want the violence to stop, but I love my partner. I will only leave when it impacts negatively on the children. If he starts to hurt the children himself, I will leave. But also, if I know that, that it impacts negatively, I would leave. Now, if we've had that little brochure, um, this brochure here, which has been uh, designed in New Zealand by the Brainwave Trust, uh, um, seeing, hearing, and feeling violence changes the way your child brain grows. And so we have two brochures, which in a women's shelter, women need to know the facts. At first we thought, is that shock treatment? Or, But women need to know the truth and they need to know the facts. And I don't think that, you know, we have many women who came 10, 12 times backwards and forwards um, to, the, to the shelter. So I think it's about giving women information and um, supporting them. And um, yeah, so I think that's, yeah, but it's, it's something that's being monitored and um, talked about a lot in Australia, for sure, that child protection situation. Any other questions? Well, I might hand over to Christina and um, Annika. Annika, Annika. Mm -hmm. And um, if anyone has any other questions at the end, then by all means, we can do that. I have quite a lot of resources as well. Um, one thing I didn't mention, but I will. Um, I have some pens here with a USB in the end, which has a copy of the presentation. All our research reports are on it. The posters are on it, the brochures are on it. Everything is on there. So before you leave, you will get one of these. And, uh, <coughs> Thank you, Mel. Actually, there is just something else I've forgotten. Can I just jump in? This is a, um, an obscure thing I'm going to do. I'm, because we're halfway, I'm just going to pass these around. Um, these are cho little chocolates. So I'd like you all to take one. And at the end, um, I will explain why I'm passing these around. Thank you. You can take two, maybe, if there's enough for everyone. <laughs> so I'm going to go and sit here. You don't know that. <laughs> Did I take that? No. Okay, thank you, Mel. Um, well, you're, you're uh, very lucky to be here because you're going to get a lot of nice stuff today to take home with you. Um, I'm going to find my art presentation first. for children, uh, especially designed for children, to address um, the emotions they feel, the trauma they've been through, um, and, and everything they heard. And um, we started designing this program together with a drama therapist. And we started in 2006 uh, together with our child workers. Um, and they um, created our puppet Tony and Tony uh, reflects and feels the same as the children in the shelter do. We needed a program that um, could be offered continuously because um, women come at any moment in crisis centers um, and others leave after a while um, moving away again. So we needed um, a space where children can join at any moment and step out, of course, with a nice goodbye, with goodbye from Tony, uh, step out at any time. Um, we needed a program uh, that was appropriate for, appropriate for the smallest children. Uh, we saw in um, our shelters that more than 40% of our um, children are under the age of five. And because of this age and the diversity of our um, women and children, 
um, diversity in their backgrounds, in their cultures. We needed a program that was uh, not so much linguistic, but more um, with pictures and more uh, visually. Um, the other thing um, we thought was uh, very uh, important was to combine a program with motherhood, um, to make, uh, to give a, a, a space to mothers to actually follow what their children are um, experiencing while they're living in um, the shelter. And we needed the mothers because they are the ones that are, of course, constantly with their children, and they need to um, um, make space um, in, their, in their own time with the children to uh, talk about these things and have some, um, some time to address these feelings the children have. And of course, the basics um, of the program um, to make a stabilizing situation in the shelter while being in crisis um, and supporting for the children. Our main objective is to limit the damage the children have uh, been through um, and give them a good basis to grow on. We developed this program together with the mother of Tony, uh, and her name is Martijn Held. She's a drama therapist in Holland. Uh, we didn't just um, create a, a program only based on our, um, our own practices. Um, we actually uh, searched theories and, and knowledge um, to ground our practices. We found three, um, uh, pre three theor theories that are on the basis of our program. Uh, the first one is from Petzold, and it's about therapeutic puppetry. And um, I'm not going into <coughs> the, um, the theories, um, but what he learned us is that puppetry makes it easy for children to identify with. Uh, maybe you have all felt uh, the little conversation on the stage with Tony that um, he shows what he feels and it immediately gives uh, space to talk about emotions and to be um, supporting to these emotions. Um, that's on the basis of um, uh, therapeutic puppetry. The other um, theory we use, and we use this more uh, widely in our um, um, mythology, also in our um, Oranje House approach, maybe you heard of it, um, that's on the basics um, from Alice van der Bas. Uh, she wrote a comprehensive, um, impressive work on uh, parenting. Um, I can say a lot about it, but in uh, a few basic stuff, is what do parents need um, and to be on their best? Uh, and one of the things is they need an em uh, em empathetic, uh, supporting surrounding. Um, others that understand how difficult parenting is. Um, they need their support from peers, from other mothers, but also from our, uh, us as workers. Um, and the other thing they need is uh, good parenting moments. Because how are you going to reflect on your own parenting if you have no um, good examples to build on, no basis to build on? Um, that's uh, another important part of the moderating factors, as Alice van der Pas calls it. Um, and they're all in uh, the program. Uh, on the last part is about the trauma pyramid and the trauma modules. The trauma pyramid of Blaustein and Kingberg. Um, we know these children uh, suffer from trauma. Um, actually, the damage done to children after um, living in a situation with domestic violence is the same as suffering domestic violence themselves. Listening, hearing, uh, as a witness, um, the damage is the same. So we know 
we have to uh, help them recover from trauma. Um, these trauma pyramids and also the modules are built on several blocks. And these blocks are all steps in also in times, called by Cohen modules, um, that need to be taken to really recover from trauma and give it a space in your life to identify this is a part of me, a part of my history, and I can move on right now. Um, one of the first blocks that need to be done um, is a structure, is it uh, creates structure. Things that repeat themselves create safety. Um, children know what's going to happen next. You just mentioned by the movie that you didn't know what to do. And probably if you just only hear what's going on, um, uh, you can um, uh, predict what's going to happen next. So we needed structure. Um, also, the program is open, educating and fun. <coughs> and here we have just five minutes until um, quarter to 11. Okay, that's going really quick then. Okay, we have um, Tony Turtle Time. It's about three, uh, it consists of three different groups. Mother-child group for the smallest children between the ages uh, of zero and four. And they come together with their mothers. And because they are together, we build on um, the basics of um, uh, safety. We build uh, safety by the presence of their mother, the presence of their mother. And we build on the basic <coughs> needs of the child, just to have a space for their, for their own feelings and for, to be themselves. We have a kids group for children betwe in between the ages of five to 10. Uh, they come alone, and that's more linguistic, <coughs> trying, teaching children how to deal with emotions. And we have a mother's group, which is parallel to the children's group or the kids group. Um, and they um, talk about the same um, themes as the children. And this, this is how mothers can follow what their children are experiencing and what they need, so they can support them in everyday life. Um, going to the next. The Tony Turtle program consists of four uh, themes. The power of positive experiences, um, which gives um, um, support for mother and child bonding by positive uh, feelings, by having close, connected um, uh, practices in the, in the meetings. We have um, uh, meetings about who do you love. Um, the same as in Australia, children love their bo both their parents. That doesn't go away, even if their fa the father or both parents are sometimes really angry and very, very aggressive. They both love them, and they miss them too, so we need a space for that. They're expressing anger in a non-violent way, of course, being angry safely, and dealing with memories. A lot of children suffer from nightmares um, and uh, memories that come back from the old, from before. We have, um, it's a continuum program, consists of eight meetings, and these four themes are uh, repeated. Uh, after eight meetings. You're going to tell about. Okay, yeah. <coughs> Sony help, helps children dealing with emotions of anger and frustration and teaches them how to cope with these feelings in a safe way. And uh, we use uh, the thermometer for that. And we use also these pictures. So I don't know if we have enough time to do it all now, but you can watch them. They are translated in English, okay. and you can all watch yeah. them. Yeah. Mm. So, so a lot of mothers, they tell me that they and their children are not here, but immediately up there. And during the program, they're starting to learn, you know, that there is a start, which is still safe. 
that they don't need to go up there. Huh? That's the goal of the program. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of children in our, you know, in our shelter who, who shrug it off. You know, it's, they do it all day. They don't do it just in the program. Huh? <laughs> these words and these uh, phrases become a way of dealing with each other, a way, a, a, a language in our shelters. Everybody knows um, that when something happens and it's it's a pity, it's not nice. Um, Shrug it off. Shrug yeah. it off. Wat zeg je dan in Nederland? Even balen, schouders ophalen. Even balen, schouders. Ja, yeah. yeah. in, in Dutch the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the children, they really do it all the day. And it's yeah. really funny to see that. It works very quickly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thinking about the time, um, because we really wanted to show um, a little a bit about how Tony talks about um, of get Tony gets angry um, and we want to see show you what happens in a meeting mm -hmm. um, do you mind if we use five more minutes of your time that's really nice here <laughs> maybe in the meanwhile um, because you're lucky to be here I we are allowed to give you all um, a small Tony for mm -hmm. So I can give you the bag and please yes. give it around and I'll grab one. Thank you. If there's not enough in there, we have more with us? Yeah, we have more with us. And another thing um, we can share with you before doing this. We had just the project. It was um, um, about this um, little book. It's about Secure Future, doing what needs to be done for children in shelters. Mm -hmm. It is actually presented last uh, Wednesday to Queen Maxima. Um, uh, we had the opportunity given by the um, Foundation for Children's Towns um, to create this little booklet. Everybody can download it after the, um, the conference, but only you here and in one other workshop will give them away. Mm -hmm. So you can take one home as well. Thank you. Um, maybe I'll, you'll grab them later. Let us do uh, the total part. Hi Tony. Hello. Hi. Hello, Chris. How are you? Yeah, nice shawl. Yeah, nice, eh? Yeah. I'm really pretty happy with it. A beautiful orange. Can I feel it? Yeah, of course. You can try it. Oh, wow. Oh, so soft. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I want to have it. No, I'm sorry, you can't because I it's it, getting baby. it's getting colder, and I need it. Stop, Tony. You need to stop. Very good. You stopped when I said so. Um, and I understand it's a pity, and I understand you're sad, but it's my shell, and I'm going to keep it. But but, I, but but Christine, I still want to have it. Can I'm I sorry. Have it? No, you can't. You know. Maybe you can just come sit with me and let us crawl for a bit and just try to shrug it off that you couldn't take the shell with you. How's that? Does that make you feel better? Yeah. Well, what do you want to do next? Okay. Shall we go play? Yeah, we go and play. Very okay. good. Very good. Thank you. Um, this is just a very small play that is used in the meetings. But actually, Tony is an identity on its own. And he talks to the children. And he lets the children help him. When he feels sad or frustrated or has a bad night with a lot of memories, the children are going to tell him what uh, he should do. The children are advising our Tony, which is a very nice uh, way of showing support to one another, yeah. starting with supporting Tony. And this morning, you know, when I took him home from, from my home, you know, on a bike in the rain, you know, on a plastic bag, you know, I, I realized how many, how many kisses he and how many stories, you know, are 
known by him, you know, you know, told to him, you know, imagine. Really, all the stories are here, and all the kisses, you know, the children gave him, and all the advice they gave him how to solve his problems. Okay. Um, I think we have to wrap it up because uh, the time is done, uh, is gone. Um, so we have uh, booklets for everybody, and you got the pen. Wow, you're gonna.